some of the most brilliant luminaries and leaders in blockchain and cryptocurrency have come together for an epic week of teaching, training, and discovery. And you are here to experience it. So get ready because the world's biggest virtual blockchain event starts now. speaker here. He is the co-founder of a project called Silo, S-Y-L-O. His name is Dorian Jahanik. I think I'm pronouncing it right. And Dorian comes from an extensive background in digital communication and entertainment. He works technology projects and he heads up the inner workings of Silo as a business. We're going to find out what Silo is and we're going to bring him in here now. Let's please welcome Dorian Jahanik, co-founder of Silo to virtual blockchain week hey dorian how you doing man hi guys how you doing good to see a nice piece of art there behind you oh cheers cheers yeah is that uh, was that done by a, a uh, crypto artist i'm looking for the bitcoin in there no uh no 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 i think that's just a bit of an insight into my nature a little bit excellent <laughs> it looks like crypto goes up up crypto goes down <laughs> 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 that's awesome well dorian tell us a little bit about yourself and what silo is all about yeah yeah yeah, sure so i mean um we've been in the uh, uh decentralized communications game for over half a decade now um so we we started out um building out a, a peer-to-peer solution because we wanted to let people um essentially communicate without the cloud um so i personally started off in the digital consulting space um, you know, I was helping businesses market through the Facebooks of the world, um, you know, figure out how to leverage these resources for their benefit. And um, I got a bit of a deep insight through that process um, into just how much was being sort of captured, logged and flogged in the background um, in relation to those services. So I went out and um, connected with a couple of guys I knew were enthusiastic about this and um, embarked on a bit of a mission to, um, you know, we've now got these amazing little supercomputers in our pockets. It seemed crazy that we couldn't find a way to let these devices connect directly um, and pull out that whole data harvest um, centralized situation. Um, so we set out on a mission essentially to um, take that and build out a solution that was going to let people do what they do online now um, without all these negatives, without without all these downsides, uh, without being a product. Mm. So it's really interesting. So it's a decentralized communication protocol. So are you kind of creating a mesh, your own mesh net? Are you, are you utilizing the traditional internet? I mean, how, how are we, you know, secure with this whenever sometimes the internet is not always secure? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. At the moment, what we've got deployed is running over the current internet infrastructure. Um, you know, that, and that's just a sheer fact of, of connection at this point, we've got mesh networking on the radar. Um, we should see something pop out from us within the next 12 months on that front. Mm. We've done some testing, um, but it's obviously very, very niche at this point, but, um, it's, it's really cool. I think that's where we're going to end up. And it's been awesome to see in the last year or so, a few little cases of mesh networking apps getting. Yeah, that was really huge during those Hong Kong protests, the mesh networking and the connect is that they were being censored. And so they were able to connect their devices together and created this whole amazing network. 
Yeah, yeah, it's been absolutely amazing to see. Um, and I think it's going to be crucial uh, moving forward in the future. And, you know, from our point of view, we're building pretty rapidly at the moment. And as we get more and more adoption, um, mesh networking is just going to become more and more viable. The, uh, the website for this is silo.io. Again, it's spelled S-Y-L-O.io. And you're, you're looking to produce Web 3.0. You know, for those who don't know, uh, why don't you give an overview of what Web 1.0 was and what Web 2.0 is and how 3.0 is really going to be this giant leap forward? Absolutely. I mean, the best way I describe Web 1 and Web 2 is, you know, it was the, that, that was building capabilities. You know, it was, hey, look, we want to be able to do this. We want to be able to communicate with someone on the other side of the world. And we've achieved all these things. We have these amazing technical capabilities now, thanks to the, the, the Generation 1 and Generation 2 platforms that have come through. You know, for us, Web3 is all about realigning that technology. You know, we now have these capabilities, but it, now it's how are these capabilities being built? Um, we need to start recognizing it's humans behind these screens. You know, these aren't just lines, these aren't just products. Um, it's cool that we can do these things, but if we want to move forward for the next decade, two decades, three decades with confidence, our kids jumping onto these technologies, we need to know that they're being built in the right ways. And it's now possible for us to build these things and create these capabilities to connect with someone on the other side of the world um, without it being this, this one-sided scenario where you're giving up everything to get that um, functionality. Um, so, you know, for us, we, we see ourselves leading the Web3 charge and that it's realigning these technologies you know from a privacy standpoint from a human centric standpoint we now interact online more than we do offline in some cases um, and for us not to have that same confidence that we can in a private room talking one-to-one -one, um, is is pretty crazy you know it's been an essential element of human development you know the ability to make a mistake to to screw up to learn from your peer reviews and then publicly portray your opinions is essential to human development and that's that doesn't really exist online at the moment and we see that as an essential component of web3 we're going to move forward now and hopefully people jump on the train uh, with us and others like us to really bring these technologies forward so in a few years time you can jump online with confidence speak openly speak freely and have the same you know element of kind of trust and openness that we can have um, in our offline communications Oh, that's great. And, uh, you know, one of the things that one of the problems that we've sort of noticed right over the last couple few years, uh, especially maybe since 2016, there's, there's there's more censorship that seems to be happening on some of these social platforms. And there's certain things that some people don't like to be, you know, discussed. And so those pieces of news or those conversations, you know, disappear. So maybe talk about that, that privacy centric side of what you're building and maybe talk about how is blockchain being utilized with uh, with the silo platform yeah yeah so i mean it probably makes sense for me to jump back to 2017 so we launched our first solution in 2017 it was a it was a confidential calling app for professionals so we had a lot of counselors lawyers financial advisors insurance mm. agents the like that were practicing strict confidentiality offline um, and then they were jumping on to services like the you know the skypes of the world the everything on these central servers um we launched that solution but the one irk we had was that we were using peer-to-peer -peer technology and if both devices weren't online at the same time you couldn't connect those dots um so we had to use centralized relays to make those connections um in late 2017 blockchain really came on our radar um, and we saw it as a way to connect those dots without using centralized relays and so it was sort of the, the missing piece of the puzzle for us um, to, to roll out a fully decentralized solution um, that would kind of go into the future um, that really ticks that purest box of a, a fully distributed platform. Um, so we use we use blockchain in that aspect, um, but we, we get asked a lot, you know, why would you use blockchain for a messenger? Um, and the, the frank answer is, no, you, you don't. That would be stupid. You know, blockchain, slow transaction speeds, not good for storing large amounts of data. Um, we use it as a piece of the puzzle. Um, we use a range of different decentralized technologies um, from peer-to-peer -to, -peer to uh, end to end encryption to blockchain to IPFS to bundle this together um, to provide this end-to-end -end solution. So how do you envision this future web addressing one of the biggest problems that we have, and that is all of the unbanked people around the world? Absolutely. I mean, we one segment we've actually seen exploding from a user adoption point of view on Silo is um, within regions like India, um, Philippines, Indonesia, um, countries where there's you know big 
portions of the population that don't have access to banking services. Um, and what we've deployed, um, for, for those that aren't familiar with it, so is essentially a private messenger combined with a crypto wallet. Um, what we're, we're making it really easy for people to jump in for the, the private messaging aspects. Uh, they have immediate access to a full Bitcoin ERC20 crypto wallet. And, you know, the sheer fact of downloading an application can give you access to not only communicate, but um, access those financial resources that your friends can share to you and vice versa to start a, a trading ecosystem um, very, very simply, you know, um, and I think that's going to be crucial for those people that aren't going to access banking services. The reality is so many people in these countries, up to 50% of the population, just don't, um, you know, aren't ever going to get access through the traditional banking systems. So I think what you're going to see is almost a leapfrog. You know, you saw in, in a lot of developing nations, they almost leapfrog that traditional laptop hardwired internet phase and went straight to feature phones and smartphones. Um, they didn't go through that traditional curve. What I think you're going to see in the financial space is a lot of those developing nations not catching up and going through the traditional banking system, but leapfrogging it all together straight into, um, you know, direct digital currency access. And, you know, for us, uh, an a easily adoptable messenger um, that protects you in terms of privacy and data, but also provides these ca capabilities is a really easy entry point um, for people to start moving into these technologies. No, that's great. No, I know a lot of people might say, well, what about Telegram, right? Or Signal. Signal is one of those ones that's sort of encrypted. And so maybe how is Silo different than, than one of those platforms? Yeah, so I mean, but both of those, I mean, Telegram, awesome. You know, they do a great job of kind of pushing the privacy message. Once again, they are still centralized. Now, our focus has been from the ground up to remove that centralized comp component tree. So, I mean, privacy for us isn't just adding layers of encryption to a service. Um, it has been, it's about grabbing everything in the middle and ripping it out. You know, when you talk on most platforms these days, you're talking, you're not talking peer to peer, you're talking to a service um, and that person's pulling that comms from the service. We just get rid of everything in the middle and establish a point to point connection. We add end to end encryption to the transport layer, um, but it's as, as kind of direct as you can get from a privacy standpoint. So it means that that third party location, you know, it's, there's less vulnerability. They can't change their mind on their data policies. You know, there's not this pot of gold if they get hacked um, individually, you know, if they get information requests, it's it's just creating a scenario as close as you can to, to offline in terms of kind of a direct conversation without a third party having to be trusted in that scenario. Um, in terms of Signal, um, Signal, amazing service. Um, you know, they're, they're a lot more sort of um, sophisticated and hardcore on that privacy message. We're more of a holistic platform. I think of Solo more like a decentralized WeChat in terms of the offering, um, you know, we're going for, we're not going for that 2% of hardcores, we're going for that 98% of the mainstream. What we've got here is a easy to use application that hardcores in the crypto or the privacy space can then easily invite their contacts and their friends, get them into this, send them, send them a few dollars in digital assets and onboard them into this world in a way that's not very highly complex. Um, so what we're trying to do is really create that, that, that mainstream to, to hardcore bridge um, and introduce people in such a way that they don't even need to know that there are there, there are these kind of hardcore decentralized technologies. Which that them. is the the solution. It's it's you know making it easy for people. Well, Dorian, we appreciate you coming on. Silo.io is the site. S Y L O dot I O. And and I know that you're eager to say hi to our our keynote speaker. So hang out just a second. And um, this is a man who needs no introduction. We could go on and on, but I would rather just bring him in and say, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tim Draper. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Terrific. Hey, that was perfect timing. Well done. Excellent. I just, I wanted to say for Dorian, I think he wanted to just say hello to you. Tim, good Dorian, to meet you. Nice talking with you. Likewise. Excellent. Well, uh, Dorian, uh, yeah, Dorian, thanks so much for joining us, brother. We appreciate it. Again, silo.io is the site for everybody to check it out. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Tim, you've heard your introduction so many times. I mean,